So you're telling me that Michigan, who had eight players drafted, lost to Michigan State, who had no players drafted for the first time in 80 years, and from what I know stat-wise and all, they had one of their worst seasons in that 80-year span as well. And Michigan lost to them. This is an ama- amazing day of reflection and awakening for myself and will further awakening and it should be for every other Michigan fan out there who isn't already aware of the fact that Jim Harbaugh and his entire scat staff and scheme well, the staff that um he is so far hired and is so far coached on the field we don't know about the current one but so far their grade at best is a C and they are easily called, they are easily frauds for what they have done. I mean, you, to think, to think that a team could have 12 players drafted, not 12, 18, 18 players drafted in two years, two of them being first rounders and six of them being in the first three rounds, and to think that they would have a combined record of 11-8 and eight is insanity. And to think that coach would still have his job after that stretch is also insanity. So the question here is, how, how can Michigan do this? How can they successfully develop sought-after NFL talent, but not not be successful in the Big Ten. I mean, it's been, what, 17 years since Michigan last won a title in 2004, and it's been 18 since the last undisputed Big Ten title, the year before in 2003. Both of those years ended in pretty bad Rose Bowl losses as well, um, allowing Texas to come back late in the fourth quarter, and USC dominating that game in two th- in the two thousand th- in two thousand three. So how can Michigan do this? This is like in my mind, this the amount of players drafted is um is a, well equ- equivalent to a crime against humanity in my book, especially when your highest drafted players are never like. Your first player out is never your highest talented player or close to it. Quiddy Pay being a three star, while Michigan had, oh yeah, six four stars drafted behind him. Um, Caesar Ruiz, he had one, two. He had two people drafted behind him, one of which was a five star in the sixth round, while he was only a four star being drafted in the first round. The 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 mismanagement of certain players and the perfect development of others and all of this just really gets on my my nerves is what it is what it gets on it's bothersome i mean how can michigan do this i mean tell me right now in the comments below before i tell you my reasoning behind it why can Michigan develop this much talent? I mean, they. I don't think... I actually have come to the conclusion they don't even ruin talent besides maybe the quarterback position. They develop every other position adequately or excellently, yet they cannot succeed in the Big Ten. Tell me why you think that is. I think it revolves around an inadequate scheme. It involves Harbaugh being stubborn with that scheme and living in the past it involves the stubbornness of keeping the same coordinators around when they don't do well, and it involves application of said given talent. Um, an example of that is actually Chris Evans being drafted this year. He was a very he was an amazing running back, and he in 2018 they just kept they constantly ran Karan. Higdon up the middle, that's all they it's all they did. They kept running him up the middle, and they would rarely sub Evans in, even though Evans was a a great player. And then same with this this year with um Giles Jackson and with Nico Collins. These are great 
players. Now, Collins opted out in 2020, but they when they played, they were rarely given the ball. Rarely. Even though they were more or less the receivers who were more often found to be open and were bigger playmakers and more reliable. The lack of the lack of application is disturbing. It's like um with Rashawn Gary's stats, despite not starting all his games at Green Bay, being statistically superior to his stats at Michigan. Now, part of that is definitely his work ethic and the fact that you physically peak around the time that you would be in your like second to like maybe fourth year in the NFL, maybe a little after. But regardless, Michigan didn't apply him correctly, seeing how much of a generational talent Rashawn Gary was. And many could also argue that like many other Michigan players, especially a player maybe like Devin Bush or a, especially a five star like Donovan Peoples Jones, were completely mismanaged and developed for the NFL, but they were never, ever utilized. So that, to me, that's all I need. That explanation is all I need to think that Michigan has an application of talent problem. Now, the scheme is, I think it's simpler. I think it's more evident, but I think more needs to be dedicated to it because many still believe, and Michigan State fans have a problem with this too because D'Antonio ran a, a scheme that has a similar amount of ineptitude at Michigan State, and State fans didn't want to admit that it was obsolete. And it's similar with a lot of the Big Ten. Big Ten's like big, physical, we want to be slow, and that's why Ohio State and Penn State often are dominant. Wisconsin and and Iowa and Northwestern are the exception, but that's why Penn State's in front of Michigan. If they had the same scheme, I tell you what, Michigan would have beaten them every year except 17, because in my opinion, Harbaugh is the more intelligent, um, street smart, and head smart coach compared to Franklin. But the stubbornness cancels all of that out because an average coach with a plan who will do will adopt whatever scheme he wants who doesn't have to win inside of a box will outdo and I've said this in my other video with Michigan he'll outdo an an Albert Einstein who has to win in a box that's what'll happen and that's what hap- has happened with Jim Harbaugh I mean even in the him adopting the quote unquote spread or like the pro the pro the pro spread it it, what is it It, it's nothing it's it's a complete and utter embarrassment it's a joke I can't stand watching it's like our offense got even worse under this new system and I don't think all of that is on the play caller I think that's some of just Harbaugh not letting Gaddis do what Gaddis wants to do, and as a result, that creates conflict and confusion. I I, I don't know, but I, I I firmly do believe that Harbaugh is refusing to let go, and that is causing damage. So it's not only that and his stubbornness too; it's the scheme that he's stubborn with doesn't work. It it worked in the in the two thousands when he was coaching at Stanford. It worked perfectly. Also, pro style does work very well in the NFL, too. But here, here in the, the Big Ten, if anyone has learned anything, the team that dominates has to either be an outlier, like a, a, a really good coach who knows how to develop talent and can be adaptable, My, Paul Christ, um, Pat Fitzgerald, Kirk Ferentz, and even, I mean, even... Um, PJ Fleck, but you can't run, you you can't be stubborn and run a scheme that isn't the most up-to-date in advance. I mean, Michigan has the talent, unlike those outliers, to adapt full-on the spread and utilize it, especially with how good of, constantly good of a, of a defense recruits and talent we have, and how good of a wide receiver core we have in running backs. And we even just got a five-star QB commit. So there's no excuse when it comes to talent. Talent here with Michigan is irrelevant. If we had a good scheme, we would have beaten Ohio State in 16 by two touchdowns. 
We would have barely lost to them in 19. We may have beaten them in 18. We probably beaten them in 17, too. If we had a good scheme, the series with Urban and Harbaugh would have probably been tied. Or, or Harbaugh would have had the edge. I'm n- not joking. The scheme ma- matters. It d- the scheme is the most important. It's not even the application of of talent it, that matters too, and that matters if you want it if you want to reach the playoff and make like beat Ohio State more often than not, like three out of four times or two out of three. If you want to always win your Big Ten championship game, but if you simply had a better scheme with the talent you already have, you'd be Penn State. You'd be a better managed. Penn State with better talent, and you probably would have won a Big Ten title, and maybe two. Not kidding you. Penn, you think Penn State utilizes all of their players to their best capability? Of course not. If that was the case, then they wouldn't have had their 0-5 start that was horrendous last year. I watched those games, and it because... I watched a lot of Penn State games because it was interesting to me. I was baffled by the fact another team, in the beginning, in the end, Michigan had the more disappointing season by record. In my opinion, Penn State still had the worst season by preseason expectations. But I was baffled that another team besides Michigan had a worse start and had even more hype. Because I'm so used to Michigan pulling this every year where we're going to make change and no we don't we come out to a top 10 team and get destroyed and then we we have this illusion that we win and that our scheme works but but it doesn't because running up the middle two out of your three available downs before you have to decide if you're going to take a risk or not is completely inept especially when you rarely run on the outside it's it's ridiculous it's exactly what it is but as I was saying, like it, we don't even you don't even have to be perfect to win and compete in the Big Ten, and Penn State is evident of that. They're not at all perfect, and they've beaten Ohio State once. They came close to it the two following years. Now I think there's some questions, but back to Michigan, it's not even asking much of you to completely change your scheme with the amount of money you have resources and talent but it's just refused it's refused to be done no one wants to do it and that is the issue because this only happens here i hate to tell you guys but tom herman at texas he was i'd argue he was more adaptable and look what happened to him now granted i don't think he was as good of a coach but and I think the loss of the recruitment in Quinn Ewers certainly had something to do with it. I mean, you lost generational talent to Ohio State, but still, he he even beat his rival once, reached a championship game, finished top ten in the AP poll. Granted, he didn't have as many ten win seasons, but regardless, he was fired last year. Same thing would happen at Oklahoma if they never beat Texas. Same thing would same thing would happen with Frank with Frank Solich at Nebraska. They had a few medi- they had a few bad years. Man had some potential character issues, and they fired him. It, programs in who want to be in good positions make these tough decisions. They do, and if they don't, you get what happened at MSU. Um, Under the late D'Antonio from, I'd say, about 15 to 19, there was constant decline. You get what happened with Bobby Bowden after 2000. You get what happened with Jimbo Fisher after 2013, this constant downslide, though he left before he was fired. It just isn't good. And now we're at the end. We're, We're closing to the end of the cycle. Now... These staff changes were far more radical and adaptive than I've seen before. Like this this is a complete revamp. This here should tell us that it's boomer bust time. That's what it should say. 
But as someone whose faith has been broken over and over again, I don't know. And if Harbaugh refuses to let go, the offense is going to be the same story. And maybe the defense will be different. And maybe since the defense is different and we adopt like a more modern zone, we can actually beat a top 10 team or get further along. But if the offense can't do anything, I don't even want to watch the games. Like, if if we beat let's say like Penn State 17 to 10 somehow or 27 to 21 in Beaver Stadium I don't care I wouldn't care unless they were undefeated and destroying every opponent in which they probably won't be cuz that would be very hard for someone in any, in the Big 10 for anyone next year to be absolutely dominating competition and we roll in there and somehow beat them like that it'd be hard and if it did happen it's the only reason I'd be excited. If Even if they just had one loss, it'd be like, who cares? Because it's not Ohio State. It's not the Big Ten title game. It's not the playoff. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter until the scheme changes and the application of talent is drastically revamped and improved until the, the culture, too... Like this, no more sense of entitlement, just this good work ethic is instilled. Like it is like the Michigan NFL players, they finally get it instilled after a year or two, and that's why you see them boom in their second year. Until that happens, nothing will change and will continue to be successful in the, the NFL draft, but stink in the Big Ten. That's all I have to say, guys. If you've reached this far into the video, remember to like and subscribe. Um, give my channel a shout out to your friends and have them watch it and share it around. Comment below and hit the notification bell and view some of my other videos. Thank you for listening and have a great day.